Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy. It's a phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 6, titled God's Work. It originally premiered on November 6, 1987. It is written by Edward Tyven? Tyven? And it's the only episode this person ever wrote. And there's no really no information out there about this person. The director, though, is Jan Eliasberg who we've seen before in Forgive Us Our Debts and Contempt of Court. So, you know, just, just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, like I mentioned, people we have never heard from before in music, so this is exciting. We don't have you <laughs> two. We don't have David Bowie. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Phil Collins, go to hell. I don't mean it, Phil. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got for this this week okay so let's get started with yin and yang the flower pot and by loving rockets so i'm gonna be brief with them uh only because they will return in the episode later on this season called love at first sight they are an english alternative rock band that mainly sp- uh, span from they were formed in 85 and they lasted until about 99 the members were uh, were david ash david J, and and Kevin Haskins, and the name of the band actually comes from uh, Love and Rockets, the comic book series by the Hernandez brothers. They are actually made up of a couple different former bands, but they went from uh, kind of a gothic rock to a brighter, more pop-influenced sound. Their first major hit was actually a cover of a Motown classic called Ball of Confusion. Their biggest hit by far is uh, the T-Rex-inspired So Alive, which hit the number three on the Hot 100. And I think my favorite thing that they did, they did a project called The Bubble Men Are Coming under the alias The Bubble Men. (laughs) It sounds like... They were hoping that the bubble men were going to go further, but then they didn't. <laughs> yes. We'll talk more about them. Episode 10. So, but let's move on to Madagliani, Lost in Your Eyes by Book of Love. Which Book of Love? Like, why couldn't you just call it Lost in Your Eyes? <laughs> See that? They're an American <laughs> synth pop band formed in 1983. Uh, they were formed in Philadelphia, but later based in New York. And what I mean by that is that they were led by the voc- vocalist Susan Ottaviano with Ted Ottaviano on keyboard. No relation. <laughs> what? <laughs> you heard me right. Susan Ottaviano is not related to Ted Ottaviano, even though... <laughs> they went to the same high school, and their ancestors come from the same small Italian town. No relation. Maybe they're fa- <laughs> yeah, someone's lying to them. <laughs> so, the rest of the band is made up of Lauren Rosselli and Jade Lee. And so, the reason why I say like they were formed in Philly but later based in New York is because Susan and Tom met in high school, and then. Susan met Jade, the Philadelphia College of Art, and we're in a band together called Head Cheese. By the way, <laughs> all of the the previous band names in the music today are going to be excellent. So, <laughs> back to Head Cheese. That was uh, Susan and Jade's band. And then Tom and Lauren met in New York Art School. They decided to create a long-distance band with half the band being in Philly and the other half being in New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as if that's not complicated. They started putting uh, stuff together, and eventually, Susan and Jade would move to New York, and they would finally get their first exposure, opening up for the Depe- for Depeche Mode for their 1985 and their 1986 tours. And that actually became a common theme with them. The Book of Love pretty much throughout their span repeatedly would open up for Depeche Mode. Now them themselves, they would have seven singles land on the Billboard top dance list between 1985 and 93. So they did see some pretty good success themselves. Their most popular song and the reason they were probably used in this episode was their song Pretty Boys and Pretty Girls, which is was one of the first songs to actually openly address the AIDS epidemic. Um, um, and it actually uh, uh, was their only hit landing in the Hot 100, peaking at number 90 in 1988. Um, their biggest hit was the song about the AIDS epidemic. So it makes sense they're in the episode. I'm surprised they didn't use that song, but maybe it was a little too on the nose. <laughs> a few other things. This song, Lost in Your Eyes, I'm not going to say the first part. 
<laughs> uh, was also featured in John Hughes's Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. 1991 song Sunny Day uh, was featured in the movie Silence of Lambs. And actually, in Silence of the Lambs, in the scene that they used the song, Lauren Groselli, who was in the band, actually made a cameo in the scene with Jodie Foster. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something that's gonna make you mad. Uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was released on November 25th, 1987. It never reached number one in the box office. Running Man gave really? way to Three Men and a Baby. So wait, so Three Men and a Baby, Three Men and a Baby over Planes, okay. Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah, and then in between there. Throw Mama from the Train and Eddie Murphy Raw will both win weekends and be number one at the box office. And Planes, Trains, and Automobiles will never reach number one in the box office. And I remember when I looked up the song, John, I saw the still from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And I'm like, okay. And when I looked look up the movies, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some wrong people in the 80s. <laughs> at one point in time people were excited about a street fighter movie so i don't know maybe the <laughs> 90s weren't much better either hey you leave <sighs> john claude van damme alone <laughs> <laughs> so other song there's that were featured in movies the song enchanted was in 1993's naked in new york and the song i touch roses made it in the Soundtrack for American Psycho. Uh, that movie, American Psycho, is set in the 80s. Oh, yeah, it's set in the 80s. Yeah, like, yeah. Like what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Six or something like that. Yep. I hate that movie. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, <I'm> <laughs> mm. In 2013, they would re reunite during a club date tours and would work on new material. But ultimately, the band kind of faded out in the 90s and everyone kind of did different stuff. Tom would spend most of the 90s working in music and making remixes for artists like Fleetwood Mac and Hole and David Byrne. Susan would actually attend the Culinary Institute of Institute of America and the Institute of Culinary Education in New York and become a highly respected food stylist. Wait, um, that took a so turn. like she's got peas. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that took a turn. You're like, okay, she, she'll sing you a song and cook you a great meal. You're like, food stylist. Like, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah what's a what, what's yeah. a food stylist <laughs> yeah tom's not sister distant cousin susan <laughs> um <laughs> became a food stylist she, she did all kinds of work with like food ads for like uh oh, okay craft and and all these people but she's also been has like all these recipes and articles in like parade magazine and all that all those cooking magazines i don't know any of them so <laughs> they're all owned by condé nast yeah, they're all like cooking light, you know, whatever. Fancy cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I, actually, she's kind of a big deal. Lauren Roselli, the one who had the uh, the guest appearance in uh, in Silence of the Lambs, she would actually continue acting. She would get married and, be, and take the name Lauren Johnson, and she would be in the movies Philadelphia, Beloved, and The Manchurian Candidate. So, Lots of work and with And not Denzel. to leave out. Yeah. Well, I think we'd all like to work with Denzel. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we would. <laughs> and not to leave Jade Lee out, Jade Lee would become a graphic design and artist. So now we get to Nine Million Rainy Days by Jesus and Mary Jane. <laughs> so they are a Scottish alt rock band formed in 1983. The band basically revolved around songwriting partners Jim and William Reed, a relation. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. They are actually related. They are related. But yeah, basically, Jim and William Reed were the only constants in pretty much a fluid band where, like, they would constantly replace, like, bassists and drummers throughout. Like, even at one point during their touring that they just decided to replace the drummer with a drum machine for the entire tour. <laughs> We don't need you this one, Bill. We'll, we we bought a new drum machine. We'll just use that. <laughs> Scottish alternative rock band released their first single, Upside Down, in 1984 on the album Psycho Candy, which was actually critically acc acclaimed. And from there, from they would release five more albums until disbanding in 1999. Some of the original names that they had for the band before they eventually settled on Jesus and Mary Chain were the Poppy Seeds <laughs> and then Death of Joey. <laughs> I love the, their, their beginning. So like when they first started out, they started out playing in, small, in front of small audiences. And during early shows, which I love... The author of the biography specifically wrote, 
Typically, amphetamine-fueled short gigs lasting about 20 minutes <laughs> with the band playing with their backs to the audience. <laughs> their early tours uh, started out with multiple incidents of violence at their shows. One in particular was a show they played with a band called Meat Whiplash. <laughs> where people started hucking bottles at them because of the short the short set and they showed up an hour late basically it because of their poor tour first like tour it left them with such a bad reputation and of their shows being you know riddled with violence that many uh uh promoters canceled shows in 85 and their defense about their sets being consistently shorter than 25 minutes was uh, their argue their whole argument was we only have about 20 minutes of material <laughs> it's everything we got <laughs> <laughs> that is the greatest excuse like that's all we got guys like i don't know what you want <laughs> i wish we were start doing cover songs or some shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah quit throwing stuff at us <laughs> they would they would get more material and it would lead to less violent story. <laughs> so things would settle down and they would uh, and tours would start to grow. And then in 87, their reputation would take another hit after while being heckled all show by a group in the audience, Jim Reed would eventually throw his mic stand at him. <laughs> one guy in the head I cut another one's arm he spent a <laughs> night in jail <laughs> and the charges were actually dropped after he apologized and donated 500 pounds to the salvation army <laughs> after years of fluid changes in the band reed brothers with the reed brothers being the only constant in 1999 things finally came to a head William would leave the band after falling out with guitarist Ben Lorre on the tour bus before a show. At that same show, Jim would appear very drunk on stage, barely be able to walk or stand, let alone sing. The band would re- well, a promoter would refund the audience for their tickets, and they would finish the tour and call it quits. They still let them finish the so, tour? That's the crazy thing. So, after the band was over william would start a solo career under the name lazy came <laughs> jim would found the band free heat with ben lori and neither project would see very much success. so in 2000s they would reunite form a few shows and we would get the traditional box sets and greatest hits and then That's they all would 20 release, minutes long. They actually released yeah i know all 20 <laughs> minutes of it. It, it it's in vine form <laughs> Make, put some new material together 2017 they released damage and joy first album since 1998 and then they, a few of the other things they have uh, their songs just like honey was was featured in the movie Lost in Translation, as well with songs in Adventureland, The Crow, and Pet Cemetery 2. Um, and for you, Dominic, they are referenced in the Simpsons episode number 22, season 24, called Dangers of a Train, in which Reverend Lovejoy is reading a book called Jerry and uh, Jesus and Mary Train. <laughs> Listen, not it's not like if you get featured in The Simpsons, you've made it. It's more like The Simpsons is going to mention everything that's ever happened in human history, and or, The Simpsons or anything that could happen. Yeah, oh, yeah. And the Simpsons will become your history class. You just watch every episode all the way through, and you'll learn everything that's ever happened in world history and what will happen in the coming 200 years. And with that, I'm fairly certain my music was longer than most of their original uh, <laughs> uh, sets. Longer than their set. <laughs> I'm still weirded out that there's two people that have the same last name and went to the same high school. That and they know related. each other. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, and their ancestors trace back to the same small Italian town. <laughs> yeah. Not related at all. 
<laughs> not related. What what do you think is the band band name though? Head cheese or uh, wh- meat whiplash? <laughs> oh, meat wh- meat whiplash is pretty good. <laughs> well, let's go break down this episode for the last time in our final thoughts. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoy this episode of Go With The Heat. I say it every week, but we would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com, twitter.com slash go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat. You can find our website, go with the heat.com. If you didn't get <laughs> it, go with the heat. Just go with the heat. <laughs> you can go on that <laughs> website. You can click on support us. You can find all the ways to support. Support step number one go to your podcatcher platform of choice and give us a review. I'm going to ask, as always, to, for the highest review that you can give on that podcaster platform of choice. Some do stars, some do hearts, some do smileys, whatever it is. Just give us the five thumbs up or whatever the review status is. And then, but don't write a review. No one reads the reviews. Write about your favorite Isai Morales, either TV show or movie. Just just explain what your favorite thing is about Isai Morales. Tell us what you like better, head cheese or meat. Uh. <laughs> While you're on that website, check out the subscribe link. You can find all the ways to subscribe to the show. Recommend it to a friend. Shoot them a link. Maybe they'll watch it on YouTube. Maybe they'll listen to it on TuneIn. I don't know. Some people like to watch it on their TVs. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. It is weird, but I'm not here to judge. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.